Hello everyone, I am Ankit and you are watching Study IQIS English. In our today's video, we are going to understand why each and every cyclone that we ever hear of has a unique name, right? So where does these cyclones get their name? Is there any individual who is naming them? We will find out in our today's video. Now the notes that I will be using in this session, you can very well download them on a particular telegram channel called as ATS Live. So just open your telegram app on the top right hand corner, there is a search bar, right? Click on it and write ATS Live, you will find the channel where you can download the notes from. And while you are at it, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel also. So let us understand what are we discussing today. Now recently Cyclone Monta made a landfall in Indian eastern coast and it wrecked havoc in the eastern seaboard states of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. Now have you realized this cyclone also comes up with the name Monta which means beautiful and fragrant flower. Now this name was contributed by a country located in Bay of Bengal called as Thailand. So what is the convention, what are the rules and regulation that allows countries to propose names for a thing like cyclones. We will understand this in our today's video. Now a little bit of background here is very important. Now the World Meteorological Organization which is an organ of United Nations, it said that at a given time there is a possibility that there can be more than one cyclone in any of the geographical location across the world. So as to avoid confusion, so as to facilitate the disaster risk awareness, preparedness as well as disaster risk efforts for mitigation of these disasters, we need a unique name that should be given to cyclone so that it becomes easy for us to identify which cyclone we are talking about. So this is the exact purpose why we give names to cyclone for the same reason why we give names to human beings. So many human beings can be similar, so, but how do we identify them? We primarily identify them by their names, which can be unique, right? So this is the basic logic why the names have been given to cyclones. Now globally, there are six regional specialized meteorological centers which are responsible for issuing advisories against any impending disaster or even naming the cyclone storms. Now in India, there is an organization known as Indian Meteorological Organization and this is one of the six specialized regional meteorological centers which is responsible for naming and issuing advisories relating to cyclones in western or in northern Indian Ocean regions. And in while doing so, it also issues advisories to 16 member countries in the region. So let us understand how this uh, organization developed and what was the background of this issue. Now in the year 2000, eight countries which included Bangladesh, India, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Thailand, all of them are located in the northern Indian Ocean region. They announced formation of WMO SK panel for tropical cyclones and this organization was responsible to decide on what and how to name the cyclones in the northern Indian Ocean regions. Eventually in 2018, this organization expanded to include now many of the Middle Eastern countries including Iran, Iran, Qatar, Saudi, UAE and Yemen. So five more countries were added to the list and it makes total of 13 countries who are responsible for naming the cyclones. Now each country every time submits a name or 13 unique names and these are the names that are eventually given to cyclones. So there are 13 names proposed by countries and there are 13 countries so put together this makes total names that are available at IMD's disposal which is one of the regional specialized meteorological center and it is IMD who picks up one of these 169 names in rotation. So let us understand what are the conventions these countries follow in order to give or assign a names to a particular cyclone. First of all the 13 names that each countries are proposing making total of 169 names available at IMD these names are used on a rotational basis and we ensure one thing that this does not take into account the country where the cyclone comes from. So there is a possibility that even if the cyclone is coming and hitting India, the name of the cyclone that is Monta was given by Thailand. So it is used on a rotational basis irrespective of whether cyclone originates or whether cyclone makes a landfall. Now these names are unique and that is why they are not to be repeated in any case so as to avoid confusion. 
Now, while naming these cyclones or while proposing the names of these cyclones, countries have to remember a few things. First of all, these names have to be neutral. There should be no reference relating to politics, religion, culture or even gender. Earlier, there was a convention that cyclones that emerged in northern hemisphere were given female names. Whereas cyclones that emerged in southern hemisphere were given male names. But now all of these names have been made gender neutral in nature so as to avoid these kind of controversies from happening. Also while assigning the names, countries have to make sure to avoid any kind of offensive sentiments, be it for any population group which might be rude, cruel or inappropriate. And also to ease the process of communication, these names have to be short. Whereas maximum amount of letters allowed in these names are 8 letters and they should also be easy to pronounce. And in case of difficulties in pronunciation, the naming country should also include pronunciation and voiceover guide so as to make it easier for people to spell the name, right? So these are the conventions or rules and regulations the countries have to keep in mind while naming the cyclones. Now, there are certain important cyclones that have appeared in recent times. So, I have highlighted the names of the cyclone, the proposal given by which country to name them and which were the affected region. These three cyclones are important because these three cyclones affected India. However, as you can understand, they were named by different countries. Similarly, the upcoming cyclone name would be Shakti, which started was the first cyclonic storm, which arrived in October 2025. It spared India's west coast. Now, the next name would be Senyar. This name was given by UAE, followed by Ditwa, followed by Arna, followed by Murasu. Murasu here is important because this name was suggested by India. Arnab, contrary to what you feel, was not suggested by India, but by Bangladesh. Now, the moot point of our today's discussion is why do we benefit cyclone? First of all, there are many benefits. First of all, by naming a cyclone, it makes different storms which might be multiple. It makes it easier for us to remember and communicate unlike technical IDs. Similarly, while naming a cyclone, it also helps media, scientific community and disaster management to issue clear warnings that you have to pay attention to X cyclone, you have to pay attention to Y cyclone. So communication becomes easy. Also, it improves communities awareness and preparedness and it reduces confusion when at at a given time, there are multiple cyclones occurring continuously in a region and this can happen geographically. And this is not just a practice that has been adopted in Indian subcontinent. This is a practice that goes on in other areas also. Do you remember one of the most dangerous hurricanes that have hit the coast of uh, US that was called as Hurricane Katrina, right? So this convention goes by in different countries also. No, we are not just the only whalers in the world, right? So these are the benefits of naming cyclones. Easy to remember, easy to communicate, can spread community awareness and reduces, communicate, uh, reduces confusion, right? Now, before uh, solving the practice question, and there are a lot of practice questions this time, I have a very important news that I want to communicate. Now, students who are looking to give exams specifically in 2027 or in 2028, you have one good opportunity and this opportunity is called as P2I Foundation Batches in Study IQ. Now, in these batches, we offer courses which cover your entire GS, that is general subject, general study syllabus. And you get that right now at a discounted rate because the sale of Diwali is ongoing and the batches would start on October 31st. So before the batches start, please make sure to take admissions. And if you use this code ATS Live, you'll get maximum discounts, not on just 2027, also for 2028 and also for optional batches, right? So please use this code and get maximum discounts. You'll get off for about 7,000 rupees, which is a lot. So this is the amount of discounts you'll get if you use the code, okay? Now let us solve the practice question, which one of the following countries is not a member of WMOSK panel on tropical cyclones? The answer is Nepal, right? This is exactly a factual question that can be asked in the exam. Now let us take a current affairs based question. The cyclonic storm Shakti that was formed in October 2025 was named by which country? This was named by Sri Lanka. If you go back in the slides, you'll find the answer. 
Similarly, why the naming of cyclones considered important by meteorological agency? It helps avoiding confusion when multiple systems are active, correct? It aids in public awareness and disaster preparedness, correct? It determines the country responsible for cyclonic relief preparation. Is it correct? No. Every country is responsible, not just one. So, one and three is the right answer. Option C becomes correct. This was an analytical question. Now, let us check whether you have got a conceptual understanding. This question, I won't solve. You have to solve this. Please let me know the correct answers in the comment section. And the ones who answer it correctly will get a thumbs up from my side. So, this is the question that you have to solve. And you have to identify correct option. The last option, if you can't see, that is the D option is 3 only. So, please let me know the correct answer. A, B, C, D, which one is correct? In the comment section. And once again, if you want to download the notes, this is where you will get it. You can scan the QR code. This is basically the QR code for channel ATS Live. So this is all from my side. Please have a very good night. We'll see each other again tomorrow.